things are changing very rapidly in the Middle East. At least following the events that had happened on October 7, 2023. Since then, the tension between Iran and Israel has reached its peak. Israel is eliminating Iranian assets in Syria, Lebanon, Yemen and Iraq since October 7. And according to the geopolitical scientists or researchers or experts, they are speculating that the tension between Iran and Israel could lead to the greater war or could lead to the World War III. So things are getting darker in that region. Things are getting darker for the world. Because the world is already facing several wars in the several fronts, in the several zones. The world is witnessing the Ukraine war. The world is already witnessing tension in the Sahel region of Africa. The world is already witnessing the tension between China and the United States. So things are getting very difficult for the world when the economic situations of the world is in a very tense spot. Now what has happened? On 31st July, Israel eliminated one of the most prominent Hamas terrorists who was the state guest of Iran, who was attending the swearing-in ceremony of its president and Israel eliminated that man. That man's name is Ismail Khaniye. He was eliminated on Iranian soil in Tehran. So that is not only a tight slap on the security arrangements of that country, but also an open challenge to his sovereignty. Post the assassination of Ismail Khaniye, the chief of Hamas, Iran was quick to host the red flag in the historical Jamkara mosque, indicating the possibility of revenge. When the world saw that kind of things, when the Qasem Soleimani, the Qasem Soleimani was eliminated by the United States in an air strike, those who were visiting Iraq in those days, at that time we saw that the Jamkara mosque was hosting the red flag. The same thing might have happened in that region. And that could lead to the greater war because the events are changing very rapidly. Before getting into the Ismail Haniyeh's assassinations and how he has died, how Mossad has planned that thing, we need to know what had happened on October 7, 2023 because that is the primary event that lead to the war. Now, the October 7 is very important because on that day, the Hamas terrorists invaded Israel through the southern border of Israel and killed almost 1,200 Israelis. And it was the first invasion of Israeli territory since the 1947 Arab-Israeli war. The attack coincided with the religious holiday of Simchat Torah. So that was the holiday. How could Hamas attack on a day which was the auspicious day for the Jews? Because they can. Because they are having the different religion which is Islam. According to the Islam, if you are killing someone of the other religion, then you are going somewhere which is which gave you which which is more pious or the more precious than this earth. Afterlife, that is called the afterlife. Afterlife, the God will going to give them so many other things. I do not want to get into that, but Simchat Torah was a very auspicious holiday for Jewish. And they, means Hamas, invaded Israeli territory under the operations named Operation Alaska Flood. The Alaska Flood, means the Alaska Mosque is there in Jerusalem. From there, they drawn the name, the Alaska Flood. The Israel referred the day as the Black Saturday or the Simchat Torah Massacre. The attack initiated the ongoing Israel-Hamas war. And after the initiations of the Alaska Flood, within, the, within an hour, the Israel launched air attack. They used IDF, IAF soldiers and the planes to bomb the Gaza regions and they dropped more than 3,000 rockets on that day on October 7. They destroyed almost all the civilian infrastructure, those who were giving 
giving the places for the Hamas terrorist because the Hamas terrorists were using and still using the civilian infrastructure to shield them from the Israeli bombing, from Israeli is Israel's army's work in Gaza. So that is what they do. They use mosques to shield themselves. They use tunnels to shield themselves. So Hamas is an illegitimate terrorist organization who does not have any sympathy for the people, those who are living in Gaza. They use the Gazan civilians as a shield to protect themselves from the Israeli attack or Israeli bombing. Hamas terrorists almost eliminated almost all the civilians of 21 communities, including the Kafar Azar, Nir Oz and the Beriri. So these are the names where almost all the civilians were killed and most of the civilians were farmers because on the south, south is more popular for the farming. And what had happened after that, it is all in front of us what is happening. The Israel started eliminating all the peoples, those who were linked to this attack and they will go all the length to eliminate all the factors, those who were related on October 7 attack. And that had happened in Munich massacre. We know the Munich massacre and I will going to tell you about the Munich attack massacre, what had happened and how Israel reacted. Because Israel is not a country who will sit somewhere alone and thinking about the things that why that happened and how it has happened. They will take prompt actions and they are taking prompt actions. But their prompt action could lead to the greater war, as I said. And when the attack happened, I mean, the Hamas terrorists start killed all the Israeli population and they started bombing the Israeli cities. The Al Jazeera, the one of the channels funded by the some very, 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 very groups, those who are those those who doesn't come in front, they funded the Al Jazeera challenge. And one of them is the Qatar's family, the Qatar's royal family. They funded the Al Jazeera. And they started spreading misinformation. As a result of that, Israel officially banned Al Jazeera in, in Israel, in operating in Israel. As a result, the incessant bombing, the several people along with the terrorists died in the Israel along with around 160 journalists. More than, one, more than 160 journalists has been killed because of the Israeli bombing, by the Israeli bombing, we can say. So what the Israel is doing, it's outpouring of their emotions, but we can say that was needed, but they went too far. Too far, that as a result of that, Things and things has went went to the ICC, the International Court of Justice, ICJ, the International Criminal Court, everywhere. The South Africans have went when these places to stop that where, but it did not it did not occur any result. It did not came up. He, that country did not came up any results. The ICJ have requested Israel to stop these kinds of bombing, stop eliminating peoples, those who are, those who they might, they might have came up with and some ideas that these are the peoples has been involved in October 7. So all the peoples, those who are, who are trying to prevent the greater war, they are advising Israel not to go further, but Israel will not going to hear anyone. They will going to attack anyone those who were related to this attack now we need to know who is ismail honey because this man has been eliminated he became the prime minister of gaza after the hamas own most seat in gaza election that had happened in 2006 but immediately within one year in 2007 he was replaced by yaya sinivar yaya sinivar is one of the dreaded terrorists of hamas and he is the mastermind. He is one of the mastermind behind the October 7 attack. And he was ouster when the Muhammad Abbas Fatah party was removed. This man, the Ismail Haniyeh, 
was removed because the fatah was removed from gaza through a violent unrest who was responsible for the violent unrest that man yaya sinwar in 2007 he was elected the head of the hamas political bureau replacing khaled masal khaled masal is one of the man who is involved in in october 7 attack and he is also the in in the hit list of israel israel is also finding this man to eliminate this man but he, he cannot be reached because he is hiding somewhere in qatar or in egypt or in iran nobody knows i do not know that is why i cannot confirm you that where he is hiding maybe mossad knows but the haniye has been living in qatar living in qatar since 2019 when he left gaza strip he used to live in gaza strip but in 2019 he left for qatar and since then he has been living in qatar for 5 years from 2019 until his death in 2024 you can see the chronology over here in 2018 the us department of state designated him especially special designated global terrorist and what is the united states business in qatar united states has the largest military base in qatar largest middle eastern military base in qatar and they have been in qatar since since the beginning of the since the end of the second world war they have been lobbying for the oil they have been lobbying for the natural gas so as a result of that United States United States has several troops and the several bases in the Middle Eastern regions they have base in Qatar which is the biggest they have base in Saudi Arabia they have base in Kuwait which is one of the biggest and they have also bases in Syria and Iraq by force Iraqi government or Syrian government did not permit them did not permit the United States to station their troops but they I mean the United States is pushing or placing their troops over there because they needed oil and the gas this is the game of oil and the gas the united states could have caught ismail haniye in qatar using their diplomatic channels in qatar because qatar is one of the best friend of the united states and the qatar is influencing the regions in a very very bad manner they have been using their influence and the money to influence saudi arabia to influence united arab emirates to influence iran iraq syria india pakistan they are influencing all of them and how they are influencing they are influencing using their money using their tools with the help of pakistan you can say or in in the case of qatar they are also using al jazeera al jazeera is the qatari funded news channels as a result of that the al jazeera is being used by the qatari families or the qatari regime to spread means informations in these regions they have been lobbying against saudi arabia they have been spreading lies against united arab emirates but but you will never going to find al jazeera to talked about the internal matter of qatar what are the things happening in qatar you will never going to found out because qatar is funded by qatari families althani family so here is the catch here is the catch you have to understand this is the geopolitical quagmire that you need to understand it is not a binary it is not about 0 and 1 it is all about any number between minus infinity to plus infinity in geopolitics you does not have any permanent enemy or permanent friend you always have interest so as a result of that united states never mended or never tried to disturb the 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 things that is happening in qatar because they needed to stay over there because they need gas they need money by selling the gas of qatar and by selling the oil of kuwait these are the these are the interest these are the economical interest the economical interest always dominates the geopolitical things always influence the geopolitical things so everything is between minus infinity to plus infinity 
Nobody is your friend. Nobody is your enemy in geopolitics. Now we need to talk about the assassination because the 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 assassination story is not clear to anyone, not even clear to Western media houses. Those are the first to collect the news from anywhere in the world because they have their their team in everywhere in the world. Initially, initially when the killing of Ismail Haniye came out, then IRGC. What is IRGC? IRGC stands for Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps. Did not clarify that he was killed. They did not accept or deny it. So as a result of that. the news was not there because on 31st july according to the some of the news channels or the western news channels that he was killed around 1 am or 2 pm between 1 am or 2 pm in iran but how they did not know because irgc never revealed how ismail haniye was killed but eventually they came up with the confirmations as i said they means irgc never came never accepted it or denied it but eventually there was a no way they can hide this big event they came up with the confirmations of the assassination of haniye and the several stories are going around several stories are going around regarding that how haniye was killed or assassinated there is a story from hamas according to the hamas the haniye and his bodyguard the wasim abu saban was killed by a zionist raid on his residence who are the zionist the jews are the zionist according to the radical islams and the several turkish media outlet reported that the assassination was conducted by a mossad agent called omit nakesh who is omit nakesh does anybody have any idea who is omit nakesh nobody knows who is omit nakesh it is a fictitious character created by the turkish media channels to give this event more prominence no one knows who it omit nakesh it is the plan it is how the propaganda is being spread by the people or the by the media houses of different countries turkey learn that thing from the united states house or media houses or the media houses worked in the united kingdom Now the Iranian news channel the Fars News said that the strike targeted residents of war veterans in northern Tehran but that news immediately disputed by another Iranian news channel Tashmin News Now according to the Anwari dot media houses it is one of the Israeli news outlets the Haniye was assassinated in the Sabdabad complex what is Sabdabad complex where he had unexpectedly decided to stay in sabdabad complex is a house which is attached to the iranian president house that is very important complex and that complex has the highest security of the country even after having the highest security cover the ismail haniye was killed how that is a very interesting thing because mossad is a very interesting thing interesting agency espionage agency of the world in the latter slide i will going to talk about some of the assassination attempt or assassinated leaders those who have been conducted by mossad and its very very ferocious group called the kidon anyway in an another story on the same news channels that is amoe dot media which is according to a members of the iran's supreme national security council a quad copter was used to target haniye after his location was revealed by his own bodyguard so it is a sabotage it looks like a sabotage isn't it then why iranian leaders are blaming israel why the leaders from the other countries those who are friend with I- iran are blaming israel it is a sabotage according to the amway dot media houses story does not end here there are so many other stories according to the bbc bbc is a communist deep state propaganda news channel it spread lies and according to them the haniye was accompanied by three leaders of the group 
in the building in the building means sabat complex or any other building that bbc is mentioning over here because things are not clear and this is according to the hamas officials how many of you believe that i do not believe that because as i said the geopolitics is not zero and one there are so many lines in between lines you have to read between lines otherwise you won't understand the geopolitics there are so many factors there are so many peoples so many other agencies could have his involvement in killing ismail haniye what is hizbullah's line because hizbullah is one of the proxy of iran that is why hizbullah's line is important over here al hadin hizbullah leader the lebanese outlet with a close ties to the hizbullah reported that the haniye was hit by a projectile looks like missile fired from outside iran but some people claim that the missile was fired from inside any territory of iran itself again i am saying that nothing is clear that is why i cannot came to an conclusion that who killed ismail haniye and how it was he was killed and the israel own news channel the channels 12 and the sky news arabia reported that the assassination was indeed a missile strike but was launched from within iran as i said there are so many stories so many versions that how he was killed but it is not clear to the world that how he was killed it is important for the world to know how it was killed maybe in the later times we could have we could know that the how he was killed or assassinated it is not clear for now now we need to know that israel's i mean the mossad because if someone is assassinated in any part of the world then mossad involvement of the mossad is must not only the mossad within mossad there is a group mossad is a big organization it is an organization of strength around 3000 to 5000 but within that mossad within mosa there is a small group called kidon kidon is the group which is expert in assassinating assassinating targets around the world and they have done it in in a very beautiful manner around the world and no one has came up with what had happened after the event after assassinating the subjects the people came to know that what had ha- actually happened that is how good the kidon is to understand the kidons or mossad we need to go to the go back to the 1972 munich massacre which was conducted by eight member team by a eight member team commanded by the palestinian territories lutif afif the operation that was conducted by palestinian terrorist the operation called the irkit and biram or ikrit or biram in that attack 11 israeli olympian lost their life two were killed before and nine hostages was eliminated when german police were tried to recover nine of them so following that attack the israeli prime minister golda meir authorized mossad to take down and kill everyone who had played a role in that attack so golda meir ordered mossad or kid on to eliminate all the subjects those who are subjected to that killing even after golda meir retirement or golda meir next prime minister came when the next prime minister they continued with the golda meirs golda meirs plan that is how consistent israel is if something happened with their country then something happened with all of them they are united when the nationalisms came to challenge that 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 is how good the israel is and every single one of them was hunted down and for those terrorists the world became a very smaller place because mossad was reaching everywhere from every european nations every european cities to entire world wherever those terrorists were traveling one of the munich massacre munich massacre mastermind the ali hasan saleh was hiding in a norwegian small town called lillehammer and that even called the lillehammer affair the kidon by mistake by mistake killed 
a moroccan waiter he tried to tried to brush up the things but six mossad agent was arrested because of that event and what had happened after that i do not know but something big happened but the ali hasan salame was eliminated was not that lucky for the last time he was eliminated in beirut lebanon so you can simply look at the events that mossad has done there are so many books you can read the mossad operations now another operation the nazi wire criminal the adolf eichmann the mastermind of the systematic murder of 6 million jews during the time of world war 2 was captured by mossad in argentina he was living in argentina when he fled germany he tried to change his looks by removing his hair by removing all of the things if there was a mustache then he tried to remove that to change his looks but the looks could not help him to hide from the mossad mossad is that good and he was brought back to israel then he was awarded with a death penalty that was hanged so you can clearly see how good the mossad is and still is still is their power is still very much at the helm there was another event there was a famous mossad operation called the operation democles in that operation the mossad eliminated heinz krug who was a west german rocket scientist working for egypt's missile program and his body was never found never found you can see that how good the mossad is and every spy organization especially the organization that is working for the indian government you can say the raw should allow himself to follow that kind of behavior because india has the terrorist menace that is generating from pakistan and india need to eliminate from its roots and india need to eliminate the masterminds those who are living in the army quarters of pakistan army they needed to be eliminated it is the right time and in 1965 one of the nazi called the harbar kurks who was responsible for eliminations of latvian jews during the holocaust he was killed in uruguay montevideo the capital of uruguay so hamas is that good i i mean excuse me the mossad is that good we have to follow i mean the indian government have to follow the what the mossad has done because that is the learning curve for everyone every spy agencies around the world even cia is very ruthless cia also do this such kinds of work there are several books those who have talked about the cia operations that they conducted during the time of world war 2 and after the world war 2 during the time of the cold war there was a famous events that had happened the spy wars between united states and the soviet union there are books please read those books now we need to talk about things that is pushing the world towards the world war 3 and several leaders have warned the warned the world that it might lead to the world war 3 the president donald trump the 45th president of the united states and the president who is running for the presidency for 47th president he also warned that the events if the events in the middle east could not be controlled then it could lead to the world war 3 and it needed to be controlled but i do not think it will going to be controlled by anyone around the world because so many leaders around the world those who are favoring iran to retaliate against israel once of such countries are are russia china algeria because the palestinian president palestine palestinians means the occupied palestine the palestinian president mohammad abbas condemned the killing as well as the china russia algeria condemned the killing they have condemned israel that they should not invade the space or sovereignty of iran 
and Iran has already shows his intentions by hosting the red flag on the mosque's dome that they are ready to attack Israel. Things are getting darker and darker. We need to understand. United States, United Kingdom, France all discuss the Iranian support for destabilizing actors in the Middle East. It is not the time for discussing. It is time to act because war is spreading. Israel already have axes of resistance. That includes the Hamas, the terrorist groups of Palestine, you can say in Gaza. Hezbollah, which is Lebanon-based group. Houthi is a Yemen-based group. And several groups in Iraq and Syria. And Al-Quds groups. That those who are funding these groups and providing the training those groups how to counter Israel. So these groups are all working against Israel, all working against the interest of the United States, all working against the interest of the countries, those who are allied with Israel, like United Kingdom, France, Germany. They are trying to do something against Iran. They are, they are doing the lip service that where should not happen. But in from the behind of the curtain, they are planning for, for something else. It looks like that. As I said, geopolitics, it's not a black and white game or zero and one game. You cannot read, simply read all the newspaper lines and the believing those things. Newspapers are just for the propaganda. Newspapers channels or the newspapers, uh, digital media houses, all are being captured, all are being held by the corporate houses. They are all making money. And how they are making money by spreading lies, by spreading, by spreading the lies, by not giving the world the true facts. So you have to read between lines what is happening. How Israel is countering it, how United States is countering it, that is important. Israel is trying to counter these groups using Muslim Brotherhood. Sometimes they are funding Muslim Brotherhoods. And sometimes they are providing them training, weapons, different kinds of things. And the Turkey is the home of the Muslim Brotherhood. And we saw the power of the Muslim Brotherhood during the time of Arab Spring. Because what had happened in Egypt, that was the Muslim Brotherhood plan. The Muslim Brotherhoods were funded by, by the CIA in a very different way. By Mossad in a very different way. Not directly. But indirectly, they were, I mean, the Muslim Brotherhood were, were, was helped, was sending help to foment the Arab Spring, to destroy the regions, to destroy the country's leadership. As a result of the Arab Spring, the Libya became the very dead state, failed state. Syria, almost dead state or failed state. Iraq is a failed state right now. Only country that he saved, that has been able to save his back is Egypt because of its leadership, because of its military leadership. So we can say that Arab Spring was not a natural thing. Arab Spring was an organized thing, was a concocted thing that was funded by the CIA as well as the Mossad. If CIA is involved, then Mossad is also involved. Is, if that is Middle East, then Mossad is definitely involved. And now... When the ISIS came to, came to existence, then how that group was con controlled or controlled or pushed behind? The US funded the counter groups like Kurdish led Syrian Democratic Forces. Why? Because this group is against ISIS ideology. ISIS wanted to create a Khilafat of Islam in Syria and Iraq. The ISIS was the plan of Mossad. There are books, those who are mentioning that the Mossad is involved in making ISIS as well as the CIA is also involved in making C making ISIS. So there was the plan to destroy Syria as well as Iraq. The Arab Spring did spread Syria and Iraq, but they needed extra help by creating ISIS. That is why the ISIS was created. So ISIS was being funded by the United States. You can see and the groups, those who are countering ISIS, they were also funded by the CIA and the Mossad. So both of both sides were helping by the CIA and Mossad. Why? 
what is the reason behind it because of money because of the energy syria has ample amount of gas oil iraq has ample amount of gas and oil and what had happened after the elimination of isis the american troops are there in syria and iraq they are sitting they are still sitting over here iraq is ordering the troops to get out of get out of their country syria is also ordering united states to get out of their country but the united states troops are still there i think they are planning for the bigger things that is why i am saying that you have to read between lines geopolitics it's not about for the minds those who cannot think critically think you have to think critically and in the furanel the furanel has already had already held a furanel was held for the haniye in tehran on august 1 is today which the iran supreme leader al khamenei leading the prayer the haniyes remains will 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 then be taken to the qatar and the buried in doha he his body will not be there in gaza he is actually from gaza but his body will be buried in qatar why what is the reason why because of the symbol symbol the, the um, ismail haniye is a symbolic leader of the hamas is one of the head of the hamas who was behind the october 7 attack so it is it is the plan to annoy israel to remain their body in qatar in a safe place for the future terrorist or the future hamas leaders to come over here and visit his visit his place visit his burial place to gather to gather encouragement so this is the plan retaliations i have already said that the iran supreme leader al khamenei ordered a direct attack on israel in the response to the assassination and israeli prime minister benjamin netanyahu said that the israel will exact israel will match the aggressions that will be inflicted by iran on israel houthis hezbollah iraqi iraqi proxies all are saying in the same way they will going to going to join they will going to join what iran will going iran iran will going to do that is that is the thing that is that is making this regions very tense there are so many factors that needed to be controlled but it is not being controlled by anyone not being controlled by the united states not being controlled by the united kingdom or any leaders only lip service is going on when south africa south africa went to the icc and the icj then none of these countries none of these so called countries so called first world countries did not help south africa to win the case against israel because they are providing weapons to israel and they are making money out of it ismail haniye is not only the leader who has been not only the top leader who has been eliminated by israel before that so many other leaders has has been eliminated hamas has came into existence in 2006 in 2006 and 7 since then israel started killing all the leaders they first assassinated yaya aish the elusive islamic terror mastermind behind a wave of palestinian suicide bombing nicknamed the engineer was killed in plo ruled gaza at that time the gaza was being ruled by the plo palestinian authority after that the ahmed yasin was killed by a helicopter missile the abdel aziz al rantisi was killed in the same way then adnan al gohur the hamas mastermind bomber known as the father of the qasam rocket killed in a strike in a gaza city gaza city then niza ryan the hamas's most hardline political leaders was killed in the bombed in jabalia refugee camp on january 1 2009 these are the leaders has been eliminated by israel before this now what are the leaders has been eliminated after october 7 that is ibrahim biari the commander of the hamas's central jabalia battalion then razai mausavi the high ranking general in irgc was killed in a air strike 
by the IAF on a southern Damascus suburbs. Damascus is the capital of Syria. He was the IRGC. IRGC was helping Hamas and its Axis resistance resistance group to train how to counter Israel in that region. Saleh Al Aruri, Saleh Al Aruri, the commander of the military wing of Hamas. Regarded as the principal interlocutor between Hamas and Hezbollah was also eliminated in Beirut. Beirut is the capital of Lebanon. After that, the Marwa Isa, the Hamas military wing in Gaza. Then the Mohammad Reza Zayedi, a senior IRGC officer, the commander the Al-Quds force in Syria and Lebanon. He was killed by a Israeli airstrike on the Iranian consulate in Damascus. And after that attack, after that attack, what happened? Iran launched a massive attack on Israel. They tried to disturb Israel's internal security and peace. But Israel do have a very, very powerful missile defense system that was used against all the missiles and drones fired by Iran. And almost all of it was countered. And recently, recently, two most Terrorist, two most prominent terrorists has been eliminated. One is Faud Shukur. Who is Faud Shukur? Faud Shukur is the right hand man of the Hezbollah chief Hassan Nasarullah. Faud Shukur, what Faud Shukur did? The Faud Shukur was the mastermind behind the Golan Heights soccer field bombing, which killed 12 children. 12 children was killed because of that man, that Faud Shukur. It was a revenge attack. The same man, the Faud Shukur, was responsible or wanted by the by the United States for its for his role in 1983 barracks bombing. And in that attack, the Faud Shukur has, has not only been killed, the Iranian military's advisor also killed in that attack. That man's name was Milad Bidi. You need to remember this name. These are the very difficult name to remember. But those who are preparing for starting the channels or preparing for the examinations, you need to remind these names. These are very important. And Faud Shukur's killing, after the Faud Shukur killing, what the IDF has declared that they do not want a larger war with Lebanon. They want peace. But Lebanon or Hezbollah has came up with the clarification that they will going to give the test of the same blood that they have given to Hezbollah. Recently, the Yemen from nowhere started attacking Tel Aviv with drones. And what had happened after the drone attack? Israel fly over the Red Sea, bombing the Yemeni oil tankers, killing thousands of men or hundreds of men, women's children. Nobody knows how many killed in that attack because these peoples, these peoples, those who are related to the terrorist organization, they will never going to admit that this much people has been killed. They will never going to admit because to protect themselves from, from the public, from the public image, the public assassinations, public image assassinations. They tried to hold themselves as an upper human being, as a very straight man. That is the problems with these organizations. They will never going to admit what had happened with them. So Faud Sukur is one of them. And Mohammed Daif, he was the mastermind behind the October 7 attack and was killed on 13 July 2024. But no confirmation was made by the IMA, IDF and today, today means August 1, the IDF came up with confirmation report that he was killed in a strike on Khan Yunis. The man was the most wanted man for the Israel since 1995. He escaped multiple Israeli assassination attempt. He lost so many fingers. And also, according to the report, he has also lost his eyes and some of the body parts. And he is in wheelchair, according to the sum of the reports. The truth is not there because Muhammad Daif is a very recluse man. 
he always stayed behind the curtain nobody knows where he is living but musad knew that where he was living that is why he his place was bombed and he was eliminated now the israel's iran game because iran is problematic for the countries in the regions as i said the iran game is for the bigger war the iran do have a problem with saudi arabia with united arab emirates with bahrain with other countries in the region because iran is a shia dominated country his most of the populations are following the shia sections of the islamic islam and i have said about saudi arabia united arab emirates they are the sunni muslims as a result of that the competitions or the you can say the competition between these two regions or two groups two groups of the muslims is very prominent and you could see these things around the world they will going to oppose anything those who are related to sunni the shias will going to oppose sunnis and the sunnis will going to oppose shias that is why the competitions and the enmity between these two sects it's very high that is why i am saying that the israel iran game is very big and israel has always mended its relationship under abraham record with united arab emirates bahrain and they are trying to mend relationship with saudi arabia because of what because of the iran game and china is trying to pull saudi arabia away from the israel basket because china is the friend of iran and china is as well as the friend of saudi arabia so this is the game that's it this is the game is being played by the pip by the groups of countries in this regions and the competitions in this regions has always been high since the second world war the region has been devastated because of the war the united states has bombed had dropped so many bombs in these regions that you cannot compare that how many bombs they dropped in vietnam they obviously they have dropped the multiple number of bombs those who were those who were very much heinous act on the behalf of a country which called itself the beacon of beacon of democracy beacon of sovereignty but that is the country that invaded most of the nations and no one is there to question it who is that country that is united states so this is the thing i am talking about and recently why there was a sorn in event because iranian population has elected a new president and after the killing after the killing of the president ibrahim raisi and the foreign minister hussein amir abdullahin the vice president was in the power and within 15 days within 15 days of the eliminations of the ibrahim raisi the iran needed to conduct a new elections and in new elections they came up with the new leader that is pezeskin and ismail haniye was there in his the mossad pezeskin's ceremony the oath ceremony and he was killed over there and there were there were so many questions when ibrahim raisi and the foreign minister hussein amir abdullahin was eliminated because they were using the bell the helicopter those, those were manufactured by the bell bell is an american company and some say some experts say the helicopter systems the software system was hacked by mossad or cia and they deliberately that helicopter to drop into the regions those who were very recluse and there was a no proof that this thing has happened as a result of that that thing has died the question has died and after that the new leaders has came to came to the power the pezeskin and his first speech his first speech in the iranian parliament was death to israel 
and did to the United States. You can clearly see how much enmity these two countries have. And Israel is trying to trying to prevent Iran getting the nuclear weapons because if Iran will be able to get the nuclear weapons, then whole regions will be pushed into a greater war. Then no one in the no one in the world will be able will ever be able to ever be able to save this world from the World War Three. And as a result of that, Israel has been assass assassinating some of the Iranian nuclear scientists and they are also using the drones to eliminate some of the leaders and now I will going to tell you that who are those Iranian scientists and in which time they were eliminated in January 10 2010 a physics professor at the Tehran University Masood Ali Mohammadi was killed by a remote control bomb planted on his motorcycle who planted it other than Mossad or Kidon, no one is capable of planting bomb in a motorcycle which is operating within Iran. And in the same year 2010, a professor in the nuclear engineering facility at the Saheed Behesit University in Tehran, Majid Shariani, was killed in a car explosion. Who planted that bomb in car? Kidon. January 2012, Mustafa Ahmedi Roshan, a chemical engineer, graduated, who was graduated recently from the university and he was killed. November 2020, the prominent nuclear scientist Mohsin Fakarzadeh was shot and killed outside Tehran. May 2022, Colonel Hassan Saeed Khodeni of IRGC was shot five times outside his, his home in Tehran. Who killed these peoples? This is not possible as I am saying since the beginning of our discussion that it is the work of Kidon. Without the help of Kidon, the Mossad cannot do it. Without the help of Kidon, no countries cannot do it. Even Israel cannot do it. Now the drone attack. Israel also used the drone attack against Iranian assets and the Iranian asset means the nuclear scientist and sometimes the nuclear programs, the where the nuclear programs are going on, the research centers. January 2018, the Mossad agents raided a secure Tehran facility stealing classified nuclear archives. In April 2018, Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu announced that the Israel discovered one lakh secret files that proved that the Iran lied about the never having a nuclear weapons program. So you can see that the how dear these peoples are how dear these Mossad agents were and still are on february 2022 the former israeli prime minister niftali bennett admitted in a opinion piece published in the wall street journal in december that year means 2022 israeli had carried out an attack on a drone base and assassinated a senior commander of Iran's Islamic Revolutionary Group Crops, that is IRGC, in February previous year, that means in 2021, May 2022. Explosive laden quadcopter suicide drone hit the Parchin military complex southeast of Tehran. Now the next event, January 2023. The suicide drones targeted a military facility in central Isfahan. Central Isfahan is a very important city for I Iran because it is home to the Iran's nuclear facility and the drone facility. Now this year, this year's February 2024, a natural gas pipeline in Iran was attacked and was destroyed. In April 2024, an Iranian consulate in Syria was hit by an airstrike, killing seven people, including two Iranian generals and five officers. And Israel is doing these things with, with particular finesse, with accuracy. You can clearly see how good they are in eliminating peoples. How good they are, those who are working against their country. That is very important. That is very important for the leaders to understand of every country that nationalism came first. For India, it is very important 
because there are some people those who are trying to break india in pieces they have their vested interest who are those people the people those who used to rule india in the colonial days the people those who used to rule india before the colonial days before the colonial days means the ottoman empire i am saying ottoman empire has been ruling these regions the middle eastern region since 1800 so these are the people those who are trying to hurt india's interest and the government of india need to take care of these kinds of elements those who are living in pakistan they need to use some assets to do such kinds of things because without eliminating such heinous factors no one cannot achieve the peace in that region and india is one of the biggest country and where the pakistan is getting the money pakistan is constantly getting money from imf who is influencing imf united states influencing imf because united states has more more 16.9 percent share in in imf more than 16 percent share in imf the biggest share and they have invested more amount of money in imf whose money is in imf the biggest banks those who are operating in the united states those who are lending money to the people to the countries they are operating imf and they are giving money to pakistan this is a cycle that is going on and on since 1947 when the pakistan was divided deliberately by the united kingdom so this is the game that the government need to understand the government of india need to understand to counter this kind of this kind of people now the corruptions corrupt hamas leaders ismail hani worth 4 billion dollar how could he earn the 4 billion dollar how was it possible for a person those who were those who were engaged in a terrorist attack earn the 4 billion dollar another leader the mausa abu marzuk worth 3 billion dollar khaled mashal worth almost a billion dollar how these people have earned that that much of money they earn that much of money by exploiting the people those who were mango people those who were living in gaza they exploited those people they taxed them heavily these people used to use used to use the tunnels linked between sinai peninsula and gaza they used to receive those goods from the egyptian sides and whatever the goods they were getting from that side they were taxed 20% the tax on the ak47 and tax on the milk was same how could you tax this ak47 20% and the milk on a same rate but these people were doing even even the marchesses marchesses were taxed 20% and they said that and drugs the flow of the drugs were very much common in gaza these people have earned the money by dealing in drugs and why the 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 countries those who called themselves the first one country they knew that whose banking system they were using they were using the swift banking system because they are worth in billions dollars dollars is being followed by the swift banking system but still they have managed to earn this much of money by doing the business in drugs by taxing the citizens those who were living in gaza by taxing the goods they were sending as aid the united states united kingdom unro unro is a organization united nations organizations those who were helping or distributing the goods in gaza or aids in gaza the goods were even taxed by these leaders and they have earned the money because of that taxations on those goods those were free those were free all of those goods were free for those palestinian population or gazan populations but they were taxing on the goods those who were free so you can see that what is going on and the same thing is going on in pakistan these people are funding pakistan they are exploiting the leaders of pakistan exploiting pakistani population by taxing them 
if you will going to if you will going to buy an egg in pakistan then it will going to cost you around 100 pakistani rupees which is excessive which is an excessive price it egg cannot be of a price of 100 rupees the one liter of milk is cost 400 pakistani rupees which is only 20 rupees in india but in pakistan it is 400 rupees a liter of milk one kg of chicken meat it's around 100 and 500 rupees in india that is around 200 150 some places so this is an exploitation and how much these leaders these leaders were living the hamas leaders were living the very lavish life in qatar some people some leaders were living in qatar ismail haniyeh was living in qatar some leaders are in egypt some leaders are in iran they are all living lavish life as well as the pakistani leaders they all have assets in the united kingdom australia some has assets in new zealand and the united states the same way these peoples are living that means the hamas leaders and the pakistani leaders their children ismail haniyeh have four sons and all of them are living very lavish life some are in turkey some means one of his son is in turkey he got a turkish residency and some are from the gaza the, how they earn the money they earn the money by real estate by doing the real estate business in gaza not in the gaza they have also engaged him themselves in real estate business in different other countries by investing the money those who have got by selling the flats those who were for free or for some rupees or some dollars in gaza to the gazan populations and they earn those and invested in the other places like turkey or egypt or iran this is a circle that needed to be broken this is a circle of corruption terrorism is a circle of corruption and it needed to be broken and it needed to be broken from its core and needed to be eliminated israel and india is the victim of terrorism and all these are being funded by the same group of people those who are funding or those who are selling weapons to israel as well as india they are trying to sell more weapons to India in these days. The Lockheed Martin CEO was visiting India. For what? For getting the contract of aircrafts. Because the aircrafts will going to give them more money. Because aircrafts are very expensive. As a result of that, air aircraft will give them more money, more profit. More profit will be distributed among the shareholders of that company. So this is a game that is being played by the so-called deep state by the deep state not so-called by the deep state so-called i have used so-called because they are in front of us the peoples use deep state but they are not that deep when you will going to read some books you will going to find the names the people those who are behind the scene and how they are doing the business you will going to find the name of dupont family that included in the in the deep state business the dupont family has the right to produce gunpowder in the united states and some kinds of acrylic they have the they have the uh, uh, right right of producing those kinds of acrylic and even any countries needed to produce the acrylic in their own country they needed to pay the money to the dupont family first so intellectual property right that is called the intellectual property right they bought the intellectual property right and they are selling those rights to the organizations around the world and those organizations are earning the money and giving them the some amounts of profit to them because they the dupont family sold the intellectual property right to those companies this is how they make the money the dupont is only the one examples of the family i have given there are so many there are so many who do you think investing in those banks who do you think investing in world bank 
who do you think investing in imf there are so many banks in the united states those who are investing money in those banks and whom imf is giving the money the countries bigger countries like pakistan bangladesh sri lanka this is the circle of the money this is called the money multiplier this is how they are making the money so you can understand the game of corruption through terrorisms israel is trying their best to eliminate all of its leaders although they have invested in hamas previously because of the plo plo was trying to came up with an two state solutions and israel was not ready for that particularly benjamin netanyahu was not ready for that as a result of that mossad was funding hamas initially but they stopped funding them when hamas started killing the general israeli population by sending by sending the by sending the groups of people those who were ready to kill themselves so these kinds of thing happened in geopolitics more and the more books will going to give you the insights that what is happening behind the scene i think it is good enough for today if you have any questions any questions please ask me in my comment sections i will going to give you the answers so thank you very much thank you for your support